Okay, so I'm Todd Petty. I'm a professor of aquatic sciences. I'm in the Wildlife and Fisheries Resources Program. I teach classes in freshwater ecology and river ecology, um, as well as a class in uh, fisheries management. The network sensor capabilities are uh, as limited as they are. And it is a huge, huge priority for, for water science as a whole to begin to make inroads into that. You know, the atmosphere in Charleston, as far as people who did not have direct access to, to well water or other immediately available supplies, but was mixed. I, I've never, ever, ever seen the community of West Virginia come together in a way that people did during the water crisis. The state of Charleston's water and sewer infrastructure is such that it was a ticking time bomb. It was only a matter of time before something really bad happened. And this just happened to be it. So we didn't have a lot of information from the scientific community to start with to, to know, you know, what are the effects? What are the potential hazards? What should we be telling people? And not just as the media, but what should the Department of Public Health be telling people? What should the water company be telling people? You know, we learned through this process that there really hadn't been an oversight process for above ground storage facilities in West Virginia. And uh, the tank bill, which turned into a law, is a step in the right direction to ensuring that there is proper oversight and, and continued maintenance of those facilities that, that hopefully you know, will keep something like this from happening again. There are plenty of tanks in the state of West Virginia above ground that probably need to be cleaned up. Uh, and I think it would serve us better if legislation is the solution to identify these tanks, find out who actually owns them, and then expect the, the local, state, and county officials responsible for regulating these tanks to fully execute their job in a way that we can identify the liability and clean up the mess before it becomes a problem and still not be reaching into a small farmer or a small business. But what we saw from that chemical spill is that when we don't have water, it creates a serious, serious situation and not one that's just, oh, environmentalists care about it. Everybody cares about it. Citizens care about it. Businesses care about it. It's wildly important to us and we see it when we're, we, we realize it when it's gone. Even once the water was turned on, people didn't believe the water was safe. There are some who live in parts of those nine counties in southern West Virginia who still don't believe their water is safe. They won't drink it, they won't bathe in it, they won't cook with it. Uh, they've gone to drilling their own wells or collecting rainwater or buying bottled water. Water, water sensor technology is, is, there's good technology for measuring things in the water, but the way we network that information together and then spread that or communicate that to people that they can use it then is, um, is pretty limited. We don't, we don't really do that. Uh, and it's surprising, again, going back to how valuable water is to us, it's surprising that, that, uh, that our network sensor capabilities are uh, as limited as they are. And it is a huge, huge priority for, for water science as a whole to begin to make inroads into that. And again, um, this program in the College of Media, I think, begins to raise that awareness that, that we don't know as much about our waterways as we, as we probably should. There, just, there wasn't the research on crude MCHM, and we didn't know what the protocols and procedures were for shutting down a water plant of the size of West Virginia American Waters facility near Charleston along the Elk River. We just didn't know those things, and it, and it took asking questions, investigative reporting, and a, a real sort of dogged determination to find those answers in order to get there.